Thank you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about house guest black tastic media is back once again to do another video here with me this time we're going to check out house guest a movie that he actually suggested that i check out in our collab that we did for jingle all the way not too long ago if you guys saw that collab he mentioned this movie house guest because it also stars sinbad and phil hartman who were in jingle all the way so i told him i was down i said hey let's do another collab and let's do that movie that you suggested so we're going to be talking about house guest so a big thanks to black tastic for giving me the suggestion i did enjoy the film and i'm excited to talk about it we're going to hear from black tastic in just a little bit so House Guest is this film from the 90s that's similar to Jingle All the Way. It's this very over-the-top, unrealistic comedy. You've seen it before. It, has, it isn't reinventing the wheel. It's one of those movies where a character has to kind of get themselves in and out of a situation in these completely and ridiculous over-the-top hijinks. And then you have the villain characters in the film who are kind of like bumbling idiots. Literally the villain characters in this movie. You've seen them before. It's the short guy that's kind of the one who's the well-spoken one and kind of the one who's leading the charge. And then his sidekick is the big bumbling idiot who always wants to eat things and is constantly making mistakes literally you've seen that that duo before in different films and so this movie in no way reinvents the wheel but i found myself having a good time re-watching it and it's also cool to just see something that i've never seen before watching this movie i just realized how much i love sinbad in movies and you know he's not in a whole lot these days and he's not necessarily his phenomenal actor but i always just found him to be fun and charismatic and this film is no different and then just seeing phil hartman in this film who i believe is the standout performance in this movie it's just a shame to know you know how his life came to an end and it's just such a shame that we don't have more movies with him i wish that he was still alive because i would have loved to have seen what he would have done with his comedy chops all these years and all the movies he could have been in because he was literally one of my favorite parts of this movie and i genuinely just enjoyed seeing him and sit bad in this movie so what is this movie about well it centers on the character of kevin franklin who at the beginning of the movie we are introduced to the fact that he's an orphan that he's really poor he's literally scrounging around for change in like a fountain with his friend at the beginning of the movie and then it jumps forward 25 years and at the beginning of the movie I should also mention that he said that he was going to be a millionaire and everybody laughed at him and he said that he'll be riding around in his Porsche one day and that you know yada 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 he's going to be the big shot and then we jumped forward 25 years like I mentioned and he's still broke he doesn't have a lot of money he's living in this kind of ringy dingy apartment and he's this guy who's constantly going after these very gimmicky ways of making money so that's kind of his approach to things he tries to find these different ways he can make money that aren't really efficient and are kind of just betting on luck and they're consistently failing he's not necessarily viewed as a success and we also learned not too long into the film that he ended up taking out a five thousand dollar loan from these mafia guys or, so, or some sort those are the bad guys i was talking about before who end up following him throughout the course of the film because now they want their money back but now they have um, interest and so it's actually now fifty thousand that he owes them so he tries to run away and get on a plane does not work out they catch him at the airport and um, while he's trying to escape he sees his family who's holding up a sign that is looking for somebody now it just so happens that this character who's holding the sign is phil hartman and he is waiting on an old school friend or old um summer camp friend i'm sorry uh who's this guy who's a dentist now He's waiting for this guy to show up, but he hasn't seen him in a long time. And so Sinbad decides to just come up and be like, oh, yeah, that's me. He overheard that it's a friend that he hasn't seen in a long time. So he was able to sell him on the fact that he was the old friend. And then at first it's kind of awkward. He's like, oh, I'm not too sure that you are that friend. But then they kind of hit it off. And the whole movie is just him pretending to be this person so that he can hide from these mafia guys who are looking for money from him. But now he's part of this adventure with this family who brings him into their household because they're supposed to be having him as a guest and yeah he just pretends to be this dentist and that leads into one of my favorite parts in the movie is that throughout the course of the movie he's just trying to find out more about the person that he's pretending to be it took him a while to find out that he's actually a dentist or the person he's pretending to be is a dentist so the whole movie is essentially Sinbad trying to stumble his way through these situations and learn more about the person that he's supposed to be and you know doing the things that this person was supposed to do on this trip and it just leads to these ridiculous hijinks and this very over-the-top slapstick story that is incredibly unrealistic and one of the funniest parts i found about this general premise that i think is really really funny is that this would never happen today you know like the idea of this guy meeting an old friend at the airport and being able to sell him on the fact that he's the person from the past just because he overheard 
today, you know, with, with Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, we know what old friends look like as they age. There are friends that I haven't seen in ages, but I've been able to keep up with them thanks to social media. So this is definitely a movie of its time where they can get away with a premise like this. But I just found that was funny and at least notable. So yeah, that is basically the whole movie is that you have Sinbad playing this guy named Kevin Franklin who's now pretending to be this guy named Derek. And it's funny because when he gets there and he's kind of introduced to this world of Phil Hartman's like family and their house, his you know, Phil Hartman's like rich. He has like this beautiful home. He's staying in this badass room. I it's got flowers all over it, but you know, it's a nice house, nice room. And now he's a part of these parties with these rich people and, and he's, bringing the life of the party to the situation. And so it's one of those movies where you have Phil Hartman's family who is like the rich kind of, you know, perfect family, even though they have their issues within it. You know, they got the nice house, they got the nice life. And then you have Sinbad's character who's, you know, doesn't have a lot of money, he's poor, and now he's just kind of like, being able to live off of these people for a little bit and kind of enjoying the rich life. But at the same time, you know, both sides learn something about each other. You know, they kind of take something from each other throughout the course of the film. And what I'll say right now that I thought was super funny was that it's just hilarious that when they do find out that he's a fake at the end of the movie, because you got to imagine that happens. Uh, spoilers, I'll put that in the title. But I feel like at this point, this movie's out, been out for a long time. You have to expect with a premise like this that eventually they're going to learn that he is not the person that he's supposed to actually be. When they do end up finding out who he is, they don't really seem as angry as you would expect them to be. And then Phil Hartman's character gives like this speech about helping him out of his situation with the mafia. And I know I'm just rambling a little bit here, but I just found that to be so, so funny because Phil Hartman and everybody else just kind of were like, all right, this guy lied to us this whole time and stayed in our house, but he was pretty nice, so let's just help him. And it's just such a silly premise that would never, ever make sense in any circumstance outside of a slapstick comedy from the 90s. Now, before I continue rambling my final thoughts on this movie, let's go ahead and hear what my buddy Blacktastic had to say about this. Rhythm. Doom. House. She's my to my tay. Just letting it all hang out. Ow, oh, she's a brick and his wife. Yo, what's up my YouTube fam? Once again, I'm on my man Anthony A. Perez channel, kicking facts about movies we both seen and had an idea of doing a collaboration and talking about it. The table's kind of turned this time. This is a movie that I suggested to him that we both review together on his channel. In 1995, January the 6th, House Guest dropped in theaters starring Sinbad and Phil Hartman. And, and, and right there, you like, wait a minute, January? The graveyard of movie theater months? You damn skippy peanut butter. This movie is not great at all. It's badly directed, but in theaters, I remember laughing my ass off watching this movie, partly because I'm biased. I'm a big fan of Sinbad. He was a great comedian. He was really hot in the 90s, early 80s. And then also, I seen him in person a couple of times. So I'm a little biased when it comes to his comedy. Sinbad is a black comedian, light skin, big ass eyes with red hair. Yes, a black dude with red hair. No joke. <laughs> and freckles. But this movie, the premise is Sinbad is a man who's multi-talented. He's the jack of all trades, but the master of nothing. Got his ass in trouble with the Italians. He owed them some money and they looking for his ass and they're coming to collect. So he needs to escape, get out of town, do whatever he can to get away from harm's way or they're gonna shoot and kill his ass. The battalions want their goddamn money. Well, a situation happens where he switches identities with somebody and this guy who's expecting his childhood friend to come visit for the weekend, Sinbad switches places with him. It's done in a unique way. You have to see the movie to understand how he did it. But that's the premise. So he goes to this small town, not very colorful. You can count the blacks on two fingers. And he's coming there to give a speech at a university to these kids for career day about what he does for a living. Sinbad has no clue what's going on. He stole somebody else's luggage at the airport. And Phil Hartman picks him up thinking it's his best friend from years ago. Now, they ain't seen each other in plenty plus 
years, maybe even 30 plus years. I don't know for sure, but it's been a long time. But the character he's playing, the older version of him, are damn near close in height and color. Because he runs into the guy who's really supposed to go to the weekend event and tells him that, hey, uh, Phil Hartman's wife is sick. Uh, don't call the house. It, it hurt her ears, blah, 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 blah. He said, well, good. Damn, I don't want to do the damn thing. Anyway, he was a bit of a snob, you can tell. And so the people that are chasing Sinbad, he's wearing this baseball cap. So he gives it to the other guy. Say, hey, wear this and you know, be well, be on your way. I'm sorry to inconvenience you. The reason why he did that, when those guys caught up to that man in the airport, they attacked his ass and knocked his ass out. Realized, oh God, this ain't the guy we're looking for. Gave him some time to escape. When Phil Harbin came to pick him up, he jumped in his car and said, hey dude, buddy, let me drive. He hopped into this little red Volvo and took off on a speed chase and those Italians got left behind. And that's the premise of the whole story. So you have a fish out of water, you have a guy um, portraying somebody else that he's not and trying to like, you know, fake it. You know, the old saying, fake it until you make it. So Phil Hartman and him are riding in the car while Sinbad's driving. He said, hey, old buddy, I, I'm sorry to hear about your wife. You know, he goes, oh yeah, 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 man. Um, it's been hard since her death. He goes, her death? I thought she was just sick. I just talked to her yesterday. He goes, he goes oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, she was deathly ill, but she's getting better, but you know. He's trying to figure out how to keep up with this dude. Like, damn, he knows all about me. I know nothing about him. He goes, hey, man, remember that old childhood song when we were kids? And Sinbad was like, huh? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, start singing, yeah. So Phil Harper singing this childhood song, oh, buddy, buddy, whatever it was, I don't remember. And uh, <laughs> Sinbad, it's not like filling the blank. Yeah, buddy, we're, we're for, friends forever. He's waiting for Hill Hartman, Phil Hartman to say this, this line first, then he casually catches on. Man, I found it hilarious. It was funny. He was talking about his buddy getting ate by a shark and his physical comedy is hilarious. He said, yeah, man, uh, we went, he was in the water. The shark bit his head. It was blood, bubbles, and butts. His eye, his eye got on me. His eye got on me. Oh my God, his eye got on me. I was rolling. And Sinbad is known for being funny and physically funny as well. Well, he goes, hey man, well, we made it to the place. I'm so glad you agreed to do this. He's like, what have I agreed to do? He has no idea where he's going. They get to the university. He's with this uh, panel of extinguished gentlemen, all sitting in black suits. What he goes, like, oh yeah, how you doing, how you doing? Sinbad is wearing a light green and blue jumpsuit. He is probably 20 years younger than everybody on the panel. He sits down, this lady says, oh, I'm glad you're here. Have a seat, Derek, and we're gonna open up the curtain. And the curtain opens up. It's damn near 100 students there to hear this, this, this gentleman uh, speak about their careers. Derek goes first, Sinbad's character. The lady says, oh, Derek Bond, you're first. Tell all the kids about your career. Uh, your assistant sent the slide presentation along, so all you just press the little button here and the slides would appear behind you. He has no clue what this man's supposed to be doing for a living. They keep calling him doctor and he don't understand why. Well, the slide presentation starts, he's like, oh! Um, well, the guy's a dentist and these pictures in the background are of deformed teeth, uh, tooth decay, gingivitis, very disgusting pictures in the dentistry world as he looked he's like oh oh and the crowd is cracking up the people are laughing they think it's part of the act and um he bullshits his way through this and it was pretty clever one guy stands up hey damn it you think you're fooling us all he's like i read your book explain what you meant in chapter five and he was like, uh, well, you read the book, right? Then she understand what I meant in chapter five. See, I could have wrote it in chapter six, but I chose chapter five. Dude is bullshitting his way through this whole gimmick and getting away with it. So after the presentation is over, him and Phil hop in the car. They go home to Phil's house. He meets his beautiful wife and all of his kids. He has a teenage daughter, 
a boy who's in the middle and a young girl. Now the teenage daughter, she's uh, you know, she's a wild card. She's into the goth thing. She's dating this white boy who thinks he's black. He talks like he's black, but he's a white boy with a vanilla ice haircut. I guess you call those guys wiggers, white guys that think they're, they're black. The little boy, uh, socially awkward. He wants to be a basketball star. Can't shoot to play basketball to save his life. The boy is terrible. The little girl is sweet and beautiful. And they get to the house and he meets the whole family and he's like trying to feel his way through. I guess back in their childhood days, they had a game called Grab the Butts. Sinbad had no clue, so Phil grabs his ass, he's like, hey, hey, buddy, uh, okay, I guess that's it. He went to go grab his ass, and Phil's like, hey. You know, when you're a kid, you had these little weird games, sock him in the chest, hit him in the back of the head, slap him. Well, their job as kids to have a game called Grab the Butts. Hilarious and uncomfortable to watch, but funny. So, he said, we're having a dinner party for you tonight and all the guests and friends are coming over. He's like, oh, okay. Well, he stole some luggage, like I said earlier, and they had an embroidery on this jacket. And <laughs> every person that asked him what that stands for, he had a different answer each time. And that part of the movie is hilarious. Now, Derek, the guy that he's impersonating is on a diet. He doesn't eat meat. And my man, Sinbad loves McDonald's. That is his favorite place to eat. And that running gag is hilarious through the whole meeting, uh, through the whole movie. There's a scene where he's running in slow motion to McDonald's to get a burger, get that, you know, uh, Big Mac. The girl says, hi, welcome to McDonald's. He goes, hi, how are you, how you doing? You ever notice when people talk to you a certain way, you mimic them, hi, how are you doing, fine, how are you? That's exactly what happened in this movie, it's hilarious. And this movie has a bunch of gags throughout the movie, but it's not a very good movie. The way it's directed, the editing is very choppy, very quick, quick edits, it's very quick and just, it's, I don't like the way this movie is edited at all. And, but Sinbad, understandably so, is the star of this movie. Phil is the straight man, kind of dry, kind of hand hand. Sinbad is the crazy one talking loud, you know, black men in a white neighborhood acting with food. That's the whole premise of this movie. It kind of reminds me of the late 70s, early 80s. Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder did movies together. In the 90s, you had Kid and Play, they did movies together. You had Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock did a couple of movies together. It's the buddy buddy movie thing. You know, sometimes white and black, sometimes black and black, white and white, all, all depends what you, you know. Tim Conway and, um, Oh, what's that guy's name from back in the day? Did movies like this together. So with this movie coming out and then the next year, Jingle All The Way, they had a nice chemistry. I was looking forward to a like a, a third movie, but that never happened because of the fatal incident with Phil uh, Hartman by his wife. But there's gags in this movie that makes me laugh out loud. The movie might not be good, but man, I'm telling you, I laugh my ass off. There's a scene in the very beginning of the movie it looked like he's sitting in a Porsche, revving up the engine, and a lady walked by, hey, good looking, how you doing? He drives off, there's a car behind that Porsche. It's a bucket, it's full of smoke, rusted. Um, there's a scene where he's at a dinner party, and people are asking him, oh, my friend Derek, he's a connoisseur of wine tasting. He knows the best of wines. He's like, oh, I am, okay, well, everybody drink up, and somebody says, hey, Aren't you going to taste the wine? Some stiff, skinny ass dude look like he has a stick up his butt for eight miles. He says, I am a connoisseur of wine myself and I do wine presentations and also I grate wine. He's like, oh, well, be my guest. You try it. Because my man, Sinbad, opened up the cork. He's like, aren't you going to smell the cork? He goes, no, but you can. The white guy goes like this. <sighs> yes. Then he smells the bottle. <sighs> Looks like he's having an orgasm. He pours the wine. And he goes, looks at the wine glass. <sighs> Sinbad's like, damn, do you need a woman or do you like wine that much? And everybody's laughing. 
And this crowd are stiff. Like I said, it's like a rich area in this part of town and everybody is stiff, have no imagination. And the guy's like, yes, I like my wine duck with legs and passion. He's like, okay, buddy. I tell you what, why don't you drink from a bottle next time you enjoy it better? And then there's a, a gag where everybody's drinking out the bottle. They're passing the wine around. And Phil Hartman's character has a dog. There's a glass on the ground with some wine in it. The dog drinks the wine. The dog gets drunk, passes out on the couch. In the background, they start playing the music from Brick House by the Commodores. And everybody's dancing and singing. And they do like a soul train line. This part made me laugh probably the most in the whole movie. You got these aristocrats, these uh, fancy white folks dancing to black music and they try to sing the lyrics and man let me tell you it is funny if you heard the song brick house it has rhythm doom, 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 house doom, she's my to my tay just letting it all hang out ow oh, she's a brick and his wife folks fucked that song up there's one one there's one white dude phil was like this oh she's marty marty and i was like, oh buddy this white lady Started singing opera. She's a brick house. They're dancing, acting a fool. And the director does something weird. He kind of speeds up the camera. It's kind of cartoonish, but like I said, I don't like the way this movie directed, but Sinbad again is the star of this movie. So there's a lot of bits and pieces of this movie. And of course, like every movie, they find out he's an imposter. But by the time the weekend was over, they all learned to love him. In fact, he probably likes him more than he did his real friend from his childhood because he brought up something in Phil that was missing. Passion and having fun and doing things on the spare of the moment. The kids fell in love with him and he helped his kids. Like this one boy uh, couldn't play basketball very well. And some kids was teasing. He said, look, man, me and my boy, it gets the five of you guys. And Sinbad is a pretty good basketball player in this movie. And so they, they beat these kids doing hijinks, like throwing a ball in their face. And he gets the ball back and passes it to his little buddy. He makes the shot and builds his confidence. And there's a segment where Sinbad is running and dunking. It's clearly a double <laughs> doing that part of the movie. But, you know, they made it look like he's a pretty good basketball star. Um, the daughter that's dating the guy who thinks he's Vanilla Ice. Sinbad's at McDonald's and catch him cheating with another girl. And of course, he takes care of that the little girl. He does something for her, makes her feel good. And so by the end of the movie, they love this dude. Yes, they lied to us. Yes, they did this. And, you know, some people are really into golf. He goes, Phil Hartman said, dude, we play golf together. He's like, OK, I know that meant that much to you. And there's a golf scene in this movie, which is pretty damn funny. Uh, there's, there's a uh, running gag about washing your balls. This one guy that plays golf, talked about he likes to wash his balls, keep them clean, it's good for this and that. And the way he's talking about, sounds like he means washing your actual balls. That part is funny. He goes to this little clubhouse, meet these stiff white guys, and the guy's like, hey, what's happening, brother? Give me five. And Sinbad's like, how about I just slap your ass five, you know? He's like, oh. And he starts laughing. You know how older, stiff white people are. They think every black guy is a comedian. So that was weird. So there's a lot of back and forth with the black and white jokes going on through this whole movie and it is absolutely funny. Now I'm saying it's absolutely funny, but comedy is interpreted by the person watching it. And for me, it might be funny. For you guys, it might not be funny. But I gave my man some homework, my man Anthony Perez. I'm curious to, th to think what he thought about this movie and to get his point of view. Like I said, this movie is not good by any stretch of the imagination. It came out in January. That tells you what you all need to know. But there's a couple of scenes in this movie that made me laugh out loud. So hopefully my man had a good time watching this movie. It's a throwback, but hey, comedy is suggestive and it's up to you to determine what's funny or not. But House Guest, to me, I don't even own it. But... <laughs> I remember it like the back of my hand and um, I like Phil Harpin a lot and I'm a big fan of Sinbad. So if you get a chance, check out this joint. Let me know what you guys think about this movie. Leave your comments down below for my man Anthony A. Perez and myself. And you might find yourself having a nice little chuckle watching this movie. What I said enough, I'm going to hand it over to my man Anthony A. Perez 
to bring it home. Let me know what you think, brother. I'm curious. Did you laugh? Or did you cross your arms and go, man, this is straight bull, Jai. Fuck this movie. We'll see. Until next time, be sure to leave your comments down below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and tell all your friends about my man Anthony A. Perez's channel. Do the damn thing. And just remember, yo, don't be offended. It's just my point of view. A big thanks once again to Blacktastic for being in this video. Again, thank you for the suggestion. Loved hearing what you have to say about this. And I look forward to many more collabs, my friend. You guys, as usual, can find the link to his channel down below in the description box. Go give him some love. Let him know I'm sent you. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to wrap up my thoughts here. There's not a whole lot more to say. I kind of said a majority of what I wanted to say in the whole review on the earlier half. Yeah, this is just a fun slapstick comedy that's just uh, a silly good time. I didn't find it to be this absolutely hysterical film, but I found it to be a nice fun time. There are some weird things and just some weird character moments in throughout the whole film. Uh, one of the cringiest characters in the whole movie is the character of Steve, who's the boyfriend of the daughter of the family. He goes by ST3 for a portion of the film, and he's walking around trying of like i don't know act like kind of hood and, and it's really cringy and yeah watching the movie there's definitely some things that definitely date the movie but it kind of added a charm to the movie i had a good time with it i found it to be a fun silly watch with sinbad and phil hartman that just made me miss seeing them in more movies this isn't a movie that i think is going to work for everybody i think if you already know that you're not into something like jingle all the way or just slapstick comedy in general this movie may not fly for you but if you guys are interested in checking it out house guests not a bad time i thought it was pretty cool it you know definitely harkens back to that era of the 90s where they made a lot of movies like this and there's definitely a lot about this movie that definitely works there's definitely some weird sequences in this movie like when he goes to mcdonald's in this movie or it's something like the guy who is uh drinking the wine there's like a wine tasting scene that was hilarious and there's so many big moments in this film and that's one thing that I enjoyed about the film was the pacing. Throughout the course of the film, I just felt like the film was incredibly well paced and I never felt like I was bored. And, you know, that just leans in heavy to this kind of movie. You have this very over-the-top slapstick comedy that just has to feel like it keeps moving with jokes and things that are going on. There's a lot of really over-the-top hijinks that these characters find themselves in that kind of lead to characters getting hurt in ways that they definitely wouldn't recover from. But, of course, you kind of have to view movies like this as like a live-action cartoon. And I think that this movie movie you know definitely hits the nail on the head for being that kind of movie is it the best of that genre no but i had a good time with it so again a big thanks to black tastic for putting me onto this movie definitely excited to hear what you guys have to say have you seen this movie have you not seen this movie and if you haven't i recommend checking it out it's not the funniest movie but it's a good time and i definitely was uh, appreciative to check out a new movie i've never seen so yeah guys hit that like button down below if you guys enjoyed this video comment your thoughts and as usual i'll see you in the next one Bye bye